Heroes. For nearly 400 years, Scottish regiments have played a decisive and courageous role in military campaigns across the world. Branded the Devils in Kilt by the Germans in World War I, the Scots have fought in every theatre of war Britain has been involved in, from Culloden to Korea. And this tradition has continued into the 21st century, with the troops having already served in Iraq and Afghanistan. But Scottish influence in the British Army was at its peak in the 19th century, with soldiers seeing action in nearly 20 major wars and hundreds of individual battles. My name is Ken Hames, and I'm on a journey exploring the history of Scots at war. I spent 25 years in the British Army, fighting in the Falklands and the First Gulf War, and serving in Northern Ireland at the height of the Troubles. I come from five generations of soldiers, some of whom served in Scottish regiments and laid down their lives for this country. In this programme, I'll be meeting some of the country's leading military historians, to learn about the extraordinary role that the Scots played in the British Empire. From their brave stand at the Battle of Balaclava to their incredible march to Kandahar. But I'll also be bringing the story of the Scots right up to date. Soldiers from the Royal Regiment of Scotland are once again on operations overseas. This time it's Afghanistan and it's one of their toughest deployments to date. I'll be talking to the soldiers about their tactics and their emotions as they battle their way forward in this hot and hostile environment. Some 500 troops from the Royal Regiment of Scotland are based at Camp Roberts in Kandahar, in the south of Afghanistan. From here, they can be sent on operations across the whole of the country. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Cartwright is the commanding officer of the Black Watch, 3rd Battalion of the Royal Regiment of Scotland. He knows it's a tough assignment for his men. Well, notwithstanding the enemy, the, the, the biggest challenge, clearly, is the environment. Temperature is the biggest thing, and when you combine that with um, engaging with the enemy, short, sharp bursts of, of really intense physical effort, uh, then it is a true challenge. Today, these soldiers are part of a multinational NATO force whose mission is to support the reconstruction of Afghanistan. But Scottish soldiers have a long history of serving in the British Army. Back in the 19th century, the world was being carved up by the great powers of Western Europe. As the British Empire spread across the globe, Military muscle was needed to garrison countries, back up alliances and fight battles. Large numbers of Scots signed up to take advantage of the opportunities that the British Army offered. And they were soon well known as courageous and daring troops. But the episode that made the Scots' reputation as idealised imperial warriors bravely defending their empire was the Battle of Balaclava during the Crimean War as 2,500 Russian cavalry charged the British camp at Balaclava, the only thing that stood between the British forces and certain defeat was the regiment of the 93rd Highlanders, who knew that they must repulse the attack or die where they stood. Private Donald Cameron recalled the famous moment when he faced the charge of the enemy. Now is the time to try our courage and steadfastness with a mass of cavalry coming on us, but there we stood, like a rock, determined to stand or fall together. There can be no doubt that the Highlanders showed incredible courage in making this brave stand. But to find out about the vital advantage the Scots had over their enemy, I've come to the National War Museum in Edinburgh to meet historian Stuart Allen. We can see this line spread across the ba battlefield. What was the significance of, of, of this line? We see the, the, the Highland soldiers standing here resolute and, and the Russian, Russian cavalry very close to them. In fact, this is, this is a, a condensing of, of what happened because the key thing um, was actually to do with weapons technology. They were armed with something um, new that, that allowed them to do that. And this was the mini system rifle. Uh, and actually, I'm, I've got one here. Uh, and, and this is a... This is a, a 
a weapon that looks much like the, the, the musket that, that previously infantry soldiers would normally have carried in the British Army, but there's a crucial difference. Um, inside the barrel, uh, there, is, there is a rifling groove. If I put my finger in the, the, the muzzle here, I can feel there's, there's a groove which, which twists the bullet around uh, inside uh, the barrel as it, as it comes out, and that creates a, a, a spin on the bullet which increases the accuracy. It must have been a terrifying prospect to see the enemy cavalry bearing down on them. But the new rifle the 93rd Highlanders were armed with gave them the military upper hand over the Russians, and the Scots stood firm. At about 600 to 800 yards, um, the Highlanders were able to fire a volley into them with, 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 with accuracy and power. Uh, and then again, they could reload quickly. And at about 200 yards, the Russian cavalry receive another volley, which is absolutely devastating. The Russians coming again towards us, we opened fire on them the second time and turned them. Being in front rank and giving a look along the line, it seemed like a wall of fire in front of the muzzles of our rifles. They seemed to be going away. We ceased firing and cheered. They wheeled about and made a dash at us again. We opened fire on them the third time. They came to a stand, wheeled about and off at a canter. We ceased firing and cheered. Our heavy guns fired after them. They were soon back over the hill the way they came. These are the kind of Highland soldiers as your ideal imperial warriors at the height of the, of the Victorian Empire. The Crimean War was the first war to be accurately reported in the British press. And the brave actions of the Scottish soldiers at Balaclava were immortalised by the war correspondent William Russell, who famously described the firm resistance that the 93rd Highlanders held while under attack as the Thin Red Line. These early news reports were hugely significant. For the first time, the public could read about the reality of warfare. There was a growing realisation that the acts of bravery and valour by British servicemen were going unrewarded. Something had to be done, and the decision came from the top. In January 1856, Queen Victoria issued a royal warrant instructing the War Office to strike a new medal that wouldn't recognise birth or class and was backdated to include acts of valour from the Crimean War. The medal was meant to be a simple decoration that would be highly prized and eagerly sought after by those in the military services. It would only be awarded to soldiers who had served in the presence of the enemy and had performed some single act of valour or devotion. The first ceremony was in June 1857, and since then there have been an astounding 161 Scottish recipients of the highest award for bravery in Britain, the Victoria Cross. Today, we're much more aware of the conditions in which our soldiers serve and the dangers they face. But their countless acts of valour and bravery remain undiminished. Since the days of Balaclava, the rifle has been the infantryman's best friend on the battlefield. And on the front line in Afghanistan, it's proving as valuable as it's ever been. Ready. Stand up. Having the technological upper hand means that the British Army is still considered amongst the best in the world. This is largely due to the sophisticated tactics and equipment that see different types of regiments work together to combine their skills and resources. This is mortar platoon, and it's an integral part of the battalion organization. Now, it's a critical piece of equipment because it can chuck high explosive for about five and a half kilometers. Now, if you're an infantry company commander on the ground, that's going to be critical to your success, either to destroy the enemy or to perhaps put fire down so you can get out. Push! Stay! Corporal Ramsey is drilling his men in preparation for their next sortie. Charge three, man, zero eight, one zero. 
Lauren Platini is basically the dedicated first support for the battalion, whatever they do up front, we are basically their support, so when they go into these operations or go into the patrols, they know that if the need arises, that they need some help from a bigger sort of weapon system, if you like, that obviously gives them more confidence when they're on the ground. When we're here, we need to make sure that the rounds are bang on target, because obviously we're firing, we're, we're basically firing towards compounds and everybody's closely uh, situated within them, so we need to be precise. Number two, Today's just a training exercise. But Mortar Platoon have a wide range of different types of ammunition at their disposal, from traditional high explosives to the latest infrared smoke screens. When, you, when it initially bursts, you can just see a, a faint sort of pop in, in, the, in the night sky, but then you can't see anything unless you've got infrared devices. None of your friendly forces can be seen, but then you can see miles, literally, with a clear, clear infrared. Mortar platoons a really tight family, isn't yeah. it? And your reputation here in Afghanistan is second to none, isn't it? One of the first stops, really, where we actually stopped the contacts happening because the rounds were so accurate, and it basically stopped the stopped the small arms and RPGs hitting their, their company, so the, the company could withdraw, basically, or, or just basically get a bit of respite for the fighting. So we basically physically came up and were at the rehab, uh, where that's where we basically do the battle prep for the next stop, and he would basically shook everybody's hand, saying if it wasn't for us, uh, we would possibly have been in a bit more sticky situation. Mortar platoons play an important part on the modern-day battlefield. But coming up next, we'll find out how the Scottish regiments have a much bigger and more powerful weapon at their disposal. And hear about the incredible act of self-sacrifice by a regiment which is the true story behind the famous phrase, women and children first. <laughs>